pranam acharya ji i am happy to be part of this group after following you on youtube since 2 years now my question is about reality and existence i am still struggling with identifying consciousness with the existence of my body i still have a feeling that my awareness is localized wherever my body is when my body moves from one location to another consciousness appears to be localized as well when this body travels awareness seems to change contents as well please help me dispel this my second question is about a uh, nisargadatt question to one of his disciples she is referring to nisargadatt maharaj he asked as long as there is food there is body and mind when the food is stopped the body dies and the mind dissolves but does the observer perish thank you so there is nothing called a non localized consciousness consciousness would always be localized i might be talking of the beyond but these eyes are looking at you these eyes are localized they are stationed at a point in space and time and the objects of their sight are also localized that is going to remain the body in itself is a local phenomena local and temporal both you cannot expect it to be dissolved in eternity i know where your question is coming from there have been teachers who have talked of non local or universal consciousness all that is bluff there is nothing called a universal consciousness reason being even if there is an universal consciousness that too will be localized localized in the universe the universe too is a location is the universe beyond space and time so even if you say i have a universal consciousness you are still saying that you have a local consciousness it is not possible just as the eyes cannot see anything except that which is in their visual domain similarly the consciousness cannot go beyond space and time that is why since time immemorial when man has had felt an emotional need to get physically close to godliness this is what he has come up with even god has to be localized given a shape color shape uh, uh, form and situation this form is not god this is man's effort to localize god why because man is bound to be localized because i am little can i see you as the little please because i am embodied can i see you as a body please and then with great love and devotion man comes up with this knowing fully well that god is amurt he still comes up with a murti that should tell you definitely about man's limitation as long as you are a body you cannot have anything called a non local consciousness if there is somebody promising that to you i repeat he is bluffing and there have been several authors teachers so called mystics and yogis who have written in these terms they would say i was sitting somewhere and suddenly i lost sense of my body and i started roaming around in the universe i found i was sitting on a rock i found i was the sheep and the goat i found i was the mountain even if you found yourself as the sheep and goat you are still localized you are still embodied even if you say that you felt yourself to be the mountain you are still localized as a body but all that is very tempting very attractive alluring 
you feel wow that's like flying without a ticket <laughs> the body is somewhere and you are roaming around everywhere one very famous author says i was sitting in bombay and i reached london without visa without passport without having to spend that is not going to happen that is not going to happen even god incarnate ram had to build a worldly bridge to cross over the ocean he needed stones but our great yogi needed nothing he just flew from bombay to london ram the poor fellow he had to collect monkeys <laughs> and then the monkeys had to build a worldly bridge and then ram could cross over ram didn't say that i just imagine that i am in front of ravan poor sita was grieving all the time to get a glimpse of ram and ram couldn't reach there even when hanuman reached his tail was put to fire he couldn't say that now the task is done so i am translocating myself back to ram that doesn't happen the body is the body to go from here till there the limitation of the body is that it will have to pass through every point in between that's the central rule of the body please understand this if you have to go from here till there the body must pass through every point in between that is a law of prakriti even parmatma does not violate prakriti prakriti has its own laws and it has been given total autonomy you do what you must do your laws are never going to be violated even the bodies of prophets bleed saints die and suffer from diseases prakriti is inviolable consciousness will remain localized now we come to that which is not local that is called awareness awareness bothers for no shape no forms and awareness is not a substitute of consciousness it is not an either or situation awareness is the foundation of consciousness you can either decide to give more importance to the foundation of this building or you can decide to give more importance to the content of this room the contents of this room are the contents of consciousness consciousness always needs contents even the walls of this room are the contents of this room there is no consciousness without contents you always think of something you always require an object in order to become a subject you cannot be somebody without an associated universe wherever you are there needs to be an universe for you to exist the ego is so severely dependent it cannot exist on its own it always needs something else contents and that's why the egoistic experience has been called as dualistic two are needed one cannot survive awareness on the other hand is non dual awareness is just a sleep a settlement samadhi the mind is thinking of 10 things let it think there is somebody who is asleep jagrat sushupti jagrat samadhi even as consciousness is localized and busy with all the local stuff there is somebody who gives two hoots to everything local 
who is just not bothered. That is awareness. Awareness has no relationship with knowledge. We use that word very loosely in language, don't we? When you know about something, then you say, I am aware of it. It's a bad usage. Something happened on the road there. If the news travels to you, you say, I am aware of the happening. That is not awareness. That is merely consciousness playing out. Something has been added to your consciousness. That piece of news has been added to your consciousness. That is not awareness. Awareness is when no piece of news bugs you, bothers you. News comes, news goes. Material news has arrived. The material body will act according to the news. But the one beyond material keeps sleeping. He doesn't even bother to watch. He sleeps. And it's an iridescent sleep. By sleeping, he illuminates. He doesn't even watch. Even watchfulness is a bad word. Not avalokan, merely alokan. He just illuminates. And even illumination is not an act for him. He sleeps and illuminates. It's like the moon sleeping up in the sky and still illuminating. Ah, the moon doesn't sleep, but get the idea. That's awareness. An illuminating sleep. An illuminating sleep. Because I am sleeping, therefore I am radiant, brilliant. The moment I wake up, it's all darkness. And that's why most of us look beautiful when we are sleeping. And I'm talking of material sleep, the sleep of the body. Have you seen when people are the most beautiful? Even the most stubborn criminals look a little innocent when they are sleeping. The moment they wake up, it's back to consciousness and its rotten contents. If you really hate someone, go and look at him when he is asleep. The hatred is likely to reduce. So awareness and equanimity go together. It is not even equanimity. To be equanimous towards this and that, you must first of all consider this and that. Awareness does not consider anything. It's totally beparva. It has no cognition of anything. It is you, unbothered, untouched. Unconcerned. 